We talked about cube config files earlier in this course. It is used by clients to access the cube API server. It has information about the API server and the required credentials within it. The admin user, controller manager, scheduler, cube proxy are all clients to the cube API server. So they all use cube config files to communicate with the cube API server. In this demo, we will see how to generate cube config files for this purpose. The process is documented under the section named Generating Kubernetes Configuration Files for Authentication. As you can see here, we will be creating kube config files for kube proxy, which will run on the worker nodes, the kube control manager, scheduler, and the admin user. And finally, we distribute it to the other nodes. Remember, in our design, we talked about configuring the load balancer in front of the master nodes for the API server. Note here that the components that live with the Kube API server on the same master nodes, such as the controller manager and scheduler, can reach the API server directly at the loopback address of 127.0.0.1, whereas those outside the master nodes, such as the admin user, the Kube proxy, reach the API server through the load balancer. So configure the Kube config files accordingly. First, we set the load balancer address that will be used within the kube config files. We start with the kube proxy. Then proceed to the controller manager. Then the scheduler. And finally, the one for the admin user. Finally, we copy over those to the required nodes. The queue proxy goes to the worker nodes. The rest of them goes to the master nodes. Note that we haven't created the kube config file to be used by the kubelets on the worker nodes. I'm leaving that out as of now. We will do that when we configure the worker nodes. Well, I'm leaving out all the worker node related activities to later so we have all of those tasks together in one place and we'll be looking at two ways of bootstrapping a worker node. So it will help us compare the two approaches.